tonight we get something very special because we're all going to learn something. And as Toastmasters, that's our favorite thing, right? Ooh. Now, in a normal meeting, I would go around and ask all you guests to introduce yourself. You will excuse me. I'm not going to do that tonight, simply in the interest of time. But will you please receive a very warm welcome. I know we have people, we have a handful of people who've joined us from the East Coast. They are so motivated. They are staying up late to come get this information. So that is awesome. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce our presenter tonight. So tonight's presenter, who's a dedicated Toastmaster, is using his presentation as a Pathways project for his innovative planning pathway is level three elective using presentation software. The purpose of this project is to introduce or review basic presentation software strategies for creating and using slides to support or enhance a speech. From a very young age, Robert Towner was fascinated by technology technology that had not even been invented yet. Growing up watching Star Trek with his mother, seeing things like the replicator and the two-way video communicator. Notice he doesn't talk about the Jetsons. Maybe he's too young. <laughs> All the while wondering and asking, why can't we do that? Great news. Fast forward 40 plus years and we can. Well, kind of. It's just not as easy as they make it seem. If you've been putting off hosting your first Zoom meeting because you're not sure how to start, you've come to the right place. Tonight, Robert is going to share with us some tips, thoughts, and all the basics you need to help set you up for success hosting your very own Zoom meeting. With his presentation titled Zoom Master 101, please give a very warm welcome to Robert Towner. Computer, screen on. Computer, place video call to mom. Computer, add brother, sister, uncle, aunt. Computer, place call. Yeah, I wish it was that easy. Turns out we're still a few more years away from full automation and toaster-like experience to placing a video conferencing calls. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, welcome. It's so wonderful to see everyone here this evening and I'm excited to share with you all some basic settings and features that will be sure to get you off the ground and soaring through Zoom space with great success in no time at all. Before we get started though, I'd love to see a show of hands of everyone who has had the opportunity to be a Zoom host already. Great. Now in the chat, down in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, go ahead and type in one or two words that describe your first experience. How did you feel? For me, the two words, scary and nervous. Oh my gosh, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, scary, not great. Yikes! <laughs> Uncertain, absolutely. Well, tonight our mission is simply to help you prepare for your first Zoom hosting experience to reduce those first time jitters. So without further ado, let's dive right in. I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, and then I'm going to pin Hazel. All right, so welcome to Zoom Master 101. This is your step-by-step -step guide to success in hosting your first Zoom meeting. So a few things that we're going to cover tonight, uh, we're going to talk about host and co-host. What are the differences? How to transfer host or add a co-host? 
We're going to talk about the waiting room and the benefits of that. What is it and how do we use it? How to admit people from it and how to send messages specifically to anyone in the waiting room and in chat. We're going to talk about chat settings and mute all. We're going to talk about pin versus spotlight, a couple major differences there, and then multiple spotlights, replace versus add, and then gallery view. We're going to learn how to change the view on other people's screen. Sometimes it's helpful to rearrange the participants on your screen, and maybe you want other people to be able to see the same view. So we'll learn how to do that as well. First things first, we're going to start a uh, new meeting. I'm Hopefully everybody here tonight has started a meeting. If not, I do have a link in the bottom of the spreadsheet here or PowerPoint where you can go to learn how to start a meeting. There's a couple different ways to do it. Um, tonight, we're going to focus on once you're in the meeting, how to use Zoom and host the meeting. For getting started here, let's get familiar with our screen. We're going to talk about a lot of these areas tonight. We're not going to go over all of them, but uh, a couple of key things that, can you see my mouse pointing around? Okay, in the upper left-hand corner, we have our shield with the green check, our meeting information. This is really helpful for when you are hosting your meeting and you need to be able to give somebody your meeting ID. If you click the shield, it'll pull up your active meeting ID and your password if you have a password set for it. It also has a invite button that you can click to send an invite link to people. So this is a quick, easy way to get people into your meeting if you've already started. Um, sometimes your meeting ID is not the same depending on how you have your settings uh, set. So really good information to know that. Um, the view toggle in the upper right hand corner, we're going to talk a little bit about that towards the end. Uh, down at the bottom, some of the uh, buttons we've probably already used are mute and uh, audio settings there. Video settings, um, if you want to change your background, then that is also in under uh, stop video with a little arrow there. Security settings, we're not going to get into that. Participant, we're going to talk about that. Chat, uh, really important to know where your chat button is so we can have uh, some side communication on the side over there. Screen share, that's what I'm doing currently. Um, breakout and record, we're gonna skip those. And then the fun stuff. So under reactions, if everybody could go ahead and click and give me a thumbs up on the reactions to let me know we're all having fun, that would be awesome. And uh, then the last thing here, end meeting. Uh, end meeting is really important to know there's one key feature, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, uh, that only the host can do. And it's a really important one, because if you mess up and you click the wrong one, you just booted everybody out. So we'll learn how to avoid that. All right, host versus co-host. Really, the, the main thing between host and co-host, the co-host can do almost everything that the host can do. The host has four main things that they can only do though. So the host can only make others co-hosts. Co-hosts cannot make other co-hosts. Host can only end the meeting for all. So when I mentioned the end button, all participants and co-hosts, when you click end meeting, that ends the meeting for yourself as the host. So Emmy, I believe you are the host this evening. If you were to click end meeting right now, you have two choices, end the meeting for all or leave the meeting. If you end the meeting for all, we all disappear. <laughs> if you end the meeting for yourself, now the, now the Zoom meeting is left without a host. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Uh, the host can also, is the only one that can start the waiting room and is the only one that can start the meeting. And then of course the co-host has these capabilities that they share with the host. You can place people in the waiting room. You can mute or unmute participants. You can stop somebody's video and you can spotlight participants or rename participants and start recordings. There is a whole list of other features available. These are the core features that we're gonna use in almost all of our meetings. Um, the, the complete list again is uh, in this link down here at the bottom. So uh, this, PowerPoint will be available for everybody afterwards. All right. So how do we change host and co-host? 
So to make host, we're going to transfer full control of the meeting of the of the Zoom call to another participant. So Emmy, if you were to click my three little dots in the upper corner of my screen and click make host, that removes all host privileges from you and gives them all the power to me. Now, if you were to just click make co-host, which you've already done, now that gives me a lot of the features that we just talked about. Really important to note that transferring hosts to somebody else cannot be undone. So Emmy, if you give me full control right now and turn me into the host, you can't undo that. Only I can give it back to you. Um, let's see, multiple participants can be made co-host. I believe the maximum is 50. So that would be a lot of co-hosts. <laughs> so that's uh, probably more than I think we'll ever use in, in Toastmasters meetings. Um, the waiting room, next up. So the waiting room is a really cool feature that allows the meeting uh, to play, allows the host to place people in like the lobby of a conference room, right? So we're going to have people waiting out front before we open the doors. That's our waiting room. And the when somebody first joins your meeting and you're the host or co-host, you're going to see if the waiting room is enabled, you're going to see this little window pop up here at the top. You have three choices. You can either click the X and close that out and just know that they're in the waiting room or you can admit them directly, or you can view the waiting room. And to see a complete list, uh, we're gonna click the view button. So we're gonna do that now and click that. And that takes us to our participants tab. The participants button down in the bottom does the same thing. If we were to click that instead of the uh, button up on top, it would just open this window over here. So the participants is broken up into two parts, the waiting room and in the meeting. And then this also allows more control uh, for messaging and um, uh, muting and stopping videos. Let's see, next. So if we're going to send somebody a message in the waiting room, we can send somebody directly uh, by clicking on messages. That brings up our chat window. And then down at the bottom next to two, it'll be blue and it'll either say, uh, right now it says everyone in the meeting, but if we wanted to just message only those in the waiting room, we would just click everyone in the waiting room. Now, whenever we type into the chat box, only the participants in the waiting room can see that. Um, in the normal meeting, uh, it's they, they have no idea. <laughs> um, let's see, moving on, all right. Mute all, the power of mute. So this is really helpful for large meetings when we have, say for the conference and we have a speech contest and a lot of people are in the room. Sometimes it can take a while for everybody to uh, unmute them or to mute themselves. The mute all, if you're the host or co-host, just zaps everybody all at once and everybody is muted. When we use the mute all button, I think it's really important to, to remember to allow participants to unmute themselves, unless of course you don't want them to. If you're in a, a meeting where you need everybody to, you know, to, to be quiet and not be able to say anything, then go ahead and leave this unchecked. Um, so when we mute all, now everybody is muted except for the host or co-host that did the muting. So if I mute everybody right now, it'll actually still leave me talking. Um, so the other thing to remember is that when we mute all before the speech, I've seen this a couple of times where we mute all to silence everybody, but we forget to uh, unmute the speaker and then the speaker starts and they're muted. So always remember that if you're the speaker, you'll need to unmute yourself after somebody is muted all. Um, we just talked about the allow participants to unmute themselves. Um, if you click the more button, then that also brings up the option to allow participants to unmute themselves. So if, if for some reason you wanted everybody to not be able to unmute themselves for the first half of the meeting, but then halfway through the meeting, you want to give that power back to them to be able to add value and chime into the meeting, you can click the more button and then go ahead and put a check mark here next to unmute. All right. 
the more button, which we just touched on. Uh, there's a few key features here in the more button that we want to be aware of. Lock the meeting. Let's say we're having a, a business meeting and you you've given everybody a specific time. The meeting starts at six. Everybody needs to be logged in by 605 and we're locking the meeting. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but it's there. And so you can, you can prevent people from joining the meeting at that point. Uh, the play, join, leave sound uh, button. If you have a large group and say like the conference and the speech contest, you definitely want to uncheck the play, join, and leave sound button. This is the doorbell to the meeting. So with this checked, you're gonna hear all the dings and ding dong as people come and go. So really important to have that unchecked so it doesn't disturb the speaker. Uh, enable waiting room. So waiting rooms can be enabled midstream in a meeting, which is really cool and if we are doing a meeting and you know halfway through the the speech or something we realize actually let's just go ahead and set up the waiting room and people can wait to come in then you can go ahead and enable that and then that'll anybody that joins after that will be in the waiting room or you can send people back to the waiting room at that point too um yeah that was it on that one um oh uh, allow participants to start video uh really important that we probably want that checked if that's not checked, then participants can only have uh, just audio. All right, chat settings. So the two buttons down here in your chat section, you have file and the three little dots. The file is just simply, if you wanted to share a file, click the file button and then you can find the file on your computer. It gives you your uh, file location choices. And let's say you have a text file or the PowerPoint um, presentation and you want to share that, then that's where you would do that. And that'll go to the chat. Um, over here for the Zoom host only is participant settings for chat. Let's say that we want to be able to silence the chat box during the meeting. Then we can click over here and just click no one. So for uh, if we only want to be able to chat with the host, then the host can be checked or everyone publicly or everyone publicly and directly. Pin versus spotlight. All right. Pin allows you to disable active speaker view and only view a specific speaker. I like to think of pinning as putting a picture on your wall in your living room. That picture is just for you and you can't see the picture on my wall. It's just for me to enjoy. Um, for spotlighting, I like to think of this as the auditorium and we're all in the audience and they have the, the light crew, they're shining the spotlight down on the stage and they're directing the audience where to look. Um, Spotlight puts a user as the primary active speaker for all participants in the meeting and cloud recordings. And then finally here, gallery view and follow host view. This is a really cool feature. I think it's pretty new. I actually just learned about this in preparing for tonight is as the host, you can rearrange your speakers on your screen. And then if you click the view button, you can click follow hosts order. And that forces that same view to all of the participants. So a really neat feature there. And again, only the host can do that. Um, release video order just simply releases it back to control of the participants. Uh, let's see, last couple things. Uh, spotlight specific notes, uh, really important for replace versus add that if you have three people spotlighted or more, and you go to re and you replace somebody, it eliminates those three, puts them back in the gallery and spotlights the one that you're replacing them with. Um, spotlight, you can add up to nine participants and you have a minimum of three participants with video on to be able to use Spotlight. And then pinning, uh, a pinning again only affects your screen, doesn't affect any other viewers um, and it doesn't affect the cloud recordings. Uh, so you can pin to your heart's content and it doesn't affect any recording. So that's a really good feature there. And that is it.
those are your basic Zoom host settings and features. And uh, go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Thank you very much.